Look for Josh Heron, second row. Great qualifying in fourth today. He'll be a he'll be a guy down in turn one. Lights are off, and we're on our way. Cameron Bobier, really all the front row with a good launch, but Bobier, another spectacular start on his Monster Energy Attack performance. Yamaha as they bend it into turn number one. Ooh, Matthew Skoltz looked like he had a lot of speed. He's in second spot. Oh, Gagne up the inside of Skoltz as he left the door open about one inch. So good for the 32. It looks like Tony Elias, you see Cameron went a little bit wide in that right hand, allowed these guys to close back up on him a little bit. Tony Elias is there in fourth. I gave Heron the curse, and he didn't get as good a start as he would have liked there on the second, from the second row. It looks like he's back there trying to go up underneath Bobby Fong, but right now we got three Yamahas, G-Dub at the front. These two guys in front don't want to let him go. Matthew Skultz was quickly into the minute 20 brackets this morning prior to Cameron Bobier going into the 19s and breaking the lap record. Bobier number one leading the way from 32, Jake Gagne number 11, Matthew Skultz, just like Jason said, three Yamahas, but then there's Tony Elias. Oh! And and down goes Gagne. Gagne, another mistake from him this week, and he can't believe it. So frustrated with himself. Jake Gagne, the 32, crashes himself out. That's going to move Tony Elias up to third, Josh Heron to fifth. Oh, that's such a bummer for Jake, and we're going to have to get a look at that again, Greg. Uh, that looks like it's down in the turn seven area, I believe. And, yeah, and oh, if you're new to nice. motorcycle road racing, sometimes the damage of handlebars, foot pegs, not able to continue. So here goes Cameron Bobby out front, 22-9, straight away for yeah. the number one God, plate. It looks like he loses the rear. A lot of times though, what will end up happening is you'll just tuck the front a little bit, and then the rear will come around and follow it. But it looks, you know, it almost looked like it could have gone uh, to, to where it would have high-sided him. but. Let him down pretty easily, but that bike did tumble and flip. So he is out. First lap through, almost a second lead for this guy. How about Tony Elias? We haven't seen him much, Jason. He's had no podiums so far this season, and he's put himself in a good position. And I'll tell you something I liked this morning. He had a big moment in qualifying uh, on his fast lap, and he was so frustrated by that, it actually made me feel like, man, he thinks he's got something a little bit better. And we heard him on the grid just now with Jamie talking about they have found something. They've found something with the bike and to, just to get him a little bit more comfortable. And right now he's running a solid third. As you can see, that accident with Gagne kind of split the field up just a little bit. Look at this group. Now, Josh Heron had made a big pass on Bobby Fong when they went down into turn one this last lap. And you can see he's now lost some spots. Dave Anthony right up behind Bobby Fong. So how about Kyle Wyman? Number 33 Wyman, who's put it on the podium here at New Jersey Motorsports Park before. So the 33 of Wyman on the Cato, Fa Cato Fastening Stone Castle KWR Ducati, that Pentagali V4R, trying to hold off the advantages of Bobby Fong, who is getting used to that setup right now. I can just imagine right now that David Anthony has got a smile on his face enjoying this race having someone to race with. Oftentimes, we've seen the 25 out on the racetrack and just put himself in a position with his lap times that he kind of runs a lonely race. And now he's got Cam Peterson in front of him showing him the way. David Anthony doing a great job on the 25. And like Jason was saying, running two semis, along with Bradley Ward, his teammate back in ninth place. So Matthew Skoltz continues on and whoa, what has happened here? How about Corey Alexander on the 23, getting it done past Cam Peterson. And Dave Anthony there, I can see. And uh, he's, he was running pretty consistently in the 22s was Corey. So 23-8 that last time by. The other guys have, are down in the fours, but this is gonna motivate Cam Peterson now because he knows Corey obviously is on a super stock bike as well. These two guys have been first and second this year in that championship. So these two guys know each other really well, have a lot of respect for each other. You can see Corey got a little bit better drive out of that last corner and was able to drive past Cameron as they came onto that front straightaway. On the ride, HVMC Racing Kawasaki ZX-10R, a Graves Motorsports uh, you know, kind of built motorcycle. And his uncle Richie, who is a 1998 750 Super Sport champ in this series, working on his motorcycle along with his crew, doing a great job. And how about Corey Alexander just chipping away at those lap times? He's not operating at any particular lap record pace. He's already broken that on lap two of this race. Cameron Bobier onto the front straightaway he comes. Stand up and he'll take the checkered flag and the win for race number one in the Hono Superbike class. Here comes Matthew Skultz through that last corner. He'll be happy with second place. Big stand up wheelie as they come across and we'll be looking for Tony Elias getting his first podium of the year. It's gonna be a little bit of relief for him and that team. 
Under the bubble, Tony Elias takes the checkered flag and will be able to stand on the podium. Kyle Wyman in for fourth place. And oh, Corey Alexander got so close, but Fong is able to hold him off. Back at New Jersey Motorsports Park, and for you Josh Heron fans, it looks like there's a problem with his Shivey BMW. He had to push that off the grid. Bikes are on the warm-up lap right now, so they parked that motorcycle and are getting it out of the way. Here's what happened earlier today, Jason. Yeah. This was in warm-up this morning. This is going from turn 9 down to turn 10, and he tries to squeeze up underneath Sam Verderico and gets off into the grass and collects him and Sam uh, as they went down. And this is on the second lap of warm-up this morning, and now you just got to think that was the last time the bike saw the track, and uh, obviously there's something that didn't quite get put back right or just a problem when you crash in warm-up. What does Tony Elias have in store for us today as Cameron Bovier starts for pole position? Pono Superbike race number two underway and another spectacular launch from Cameron Bobier. Yeah, Tony Elias on the outside there, number 24. He got a good launch from the second row. The two Yamahas are going to squeeze him out. Bobby Fong on the inside there as well. Looked like he might have slotted in ahead of his teammate also. But for Cameron Bobier, this is what he wants to do, Greg. Get out to a good start and lead the field. Great onboard shots from Cameron Bobier's Monster Energy Attack Performance Yamaha R1. Already trying to stretch it out ever so slightly. Jake Gagne trying to go with him. Now we're getting into that part of the track where Gagne on this very first lap threw it away yesterday. He's got to keep it nice and tidy if he wants to stay with his teammate. Yeah, more importantly, he didn't get the laps yesterday that all these other riders had. So any setup changes that he might have wanted to make overnight, he's going with his first day setup. Oh, and somebody's off. It's Bradley Ward. Bradley, Bradley Ward's Ward. bike is going to get back onto the track. And everybody sees it, though. Everyone sees it. So it's in a bad spot, evasive action taken by everyone. Wow. So Bradley Ward, everyone able to avoid disaster. In the background, and you can see Bradley Ward's yellow helmet there, and he's right in front of Corey Alexander, and he's going to get up out of the seat. I don't know what, that is so oh. weird. Like he almost saved it, or he ran off the inside of the track. I think he ran track. off the inside of the track, and then it sent his front wheel in the air, and off to the grass he goes. And by the way, we've had tremendous amounts of rain here over the last couple of days, not yesterday. So it's off track, it gets very treacherous here in New Jersey. Quick start procedure, they've just done their siding lap teams, had one representative out there to make sure everything was okay. And Josh Heron is out there after his bike not starting. But Jason, as we get set for this, looks like he's tightening up his body work there. He's got body work, yeah, he's got a body work issue or something. This was the reason why we got to the red flag. Bradley Ward in the background there, he ends up tipping off in these fast S's. Bike comes across the track. Our field did a good job missing him. You can see this bike goes road in a really, really horrible spot, by the way. You see Bradley getting in the in the ambulance there. All per per crop. Precautionary, precautionary measures <laughs> yeah. for Bradley Ward as he gets in there. Well, I talked to Steve Scheibe and he said Josh was the one that nailed down what the problem specifically was himself. It looks like there was a little bit of water in the ECU connector from cleaning it out after a little bit of a tip over this morning. We're ready for start number two of race two of the Hono Superbike class. 14 laps scheduled in this one. A strong front row of Yamahas and Cameron Bovier looking to get another launch into turn number one to be the first one there. Uh, he gets another brilliant wow. start. What a start. Now look at Tony Elias in the yellow. He's going to go to the inside, Greg. He got boxed out on that first start. He's going to be fourth this time. Now he can do what he wants to do and try to run with those Yamahas like he talked to uh, Jamie about. Run with those Yamahas for the first four or five laps. Try to get closer to them. Gagne in second behind Bobier. Skultz in third. Matthew Skultz, Tony Elias, Bobby Fong, one, two, three, four, five, in that order. Yep, I can see it in the back of my screen. Something has gone on there with him. So they didn't quite get it sorted out, and we also found out his transponder wasn't working for timing and scoring. Well, Cam at a 22-5 right now, so he talked earlier about wanting to get down into those 21s. Kyle Wyman, on the other hand, I know they're continuing to try to make some changes to this Ducati. Uh, yesterday, they had a, a decent setup. They tried to make some improvements on it this morning. But Cam's able right now to hang with Kyle Wyman. As we now look at the battle for second spot between Jake Gagne and Matthew Skultz, it is closed up to within a bike length. So it definitely disrupts things. As you see, Skultz now taking a shot at Gagne. Oh, boy. As they go into turn number one, and he's able to make that pass. That's all set up back into turn 10 area. Looks like maybe Sam Verderico on the 17. Not a great spot to Not catch Sam spot there to at catch all. Him. 
But if Sam holds on to that line, it looks like they're going to sneak underneath him. Sam bends it in. He's got to lift his knee because Gagne's coming through. So Gagne's really close now. Boy, this one could come down to a draft and pass move. Jake Gagne on that monster, monster energy attack performance. Yamaha trying to hold on to that second spot in the championship. Cameron Bobier is out front at Ooh. this point. Gagne got out of there nicely, too. He's a, get, getting out of there nice. You can see in the background, those two are together. But, Greg, another tremendous win for Cameron Bobier today. Cross the line, Cameron Bobier. 11 victories on the season to the line. And Gagne. it's going to be Jake Gagne. He got Matthew Skultz. Cameron Bobier is going for it. Look at this. How close was that? But Jake Gagne it results. Cameron Bobier with a 2.8 second victory in a red flag shortened race. And boy, look at that. 2.898 for Matthew Skultz. Bobby Fong, Tony Elias, fourth and fifth with Kyle Wyman. And then a couple of those stock thousand competitors in seventh and eighth.